And what I have found is that those practices of really being with yourself require a slowing down and a level of stillness that our current model for work simply doesn't allow time for. We just don't have the space for it often. So part of conscious leadership, I think, is actually creating the space and setting the boundaries and saying, no, I'm at my limit. I'm at my capacity. I actually can't take this project on because I'm committed to being a self leader first and foremost. And mm -hmm. I am leading all of these inner children through a massive amount of fear every time that I step out on a ledge. And I think as we grow and as we build more success in our lives, there, there's also interesting elements in our relationships with other people that can turn up. We, we might fear our own potential even, because as we step into that, does that mean that we lose the people we love? Does that mean we alienate ourselves from them or they judge us or they want something from us? So I feel like as you get to these new tiers of success, there's almost a deeper dive into the personal transformation stuff that is begging to happen. But again, if we don't slow down and find the practices that work for us, because I think it'll look different for every person, mm -hmm. we can go down a track for a very long time without being awake and without being conscious to the choices and the habits that are forming who we become down the road. So that I often think about, okay, where am I now? Where is the future self that I'm traveling to or kind of marching on towards? Because it is a it's a journey. Sure. And what are the habits or the practices that get me to that version of myself, to that version who's giving TED Talks and doing these even bigger things that feel scary now, but in 10 years might feel like second nature. We're we're building those muscles. So I just share that because those practices of being with myself were a huge part of being able to step out on the ledge. You bring up an incredible point about repetition and, and really mastering what you want to be best at and what your best skills are. I, I talk about this often. I'm a golfer recreationally, but I've been playing since I was seven. I'm constantly swinging the club to get better. And I don't hit a ball before taking a practice swing. And that has just built the motion into my memory. And when you get that, you you get so much better at what you're doing. And it allows you to take on much bigger things because you're getting better at your craft. And I, to think back to when I started podcasting, I've been doing this for nearly a decade now. I could go back to my first episode. I can't, I don't even know where it is, but if I were to try to dig it up, I know <laughs> I don't have the same ability to communicate and carry on a conversation or at least I should say back then I didn't have that ability, but through repetition and constantly being aware of where I wanted to go and, and having destinations that I wanted to reach, but appreciating the journey along the way, because as I move forward towards that destination, I'm learning so much. That's what's helped me build my brand. And you've just illustrated the exact same way. That's led you to become the leader that you are and practice this conscious leadership. So Let's dig into that a little bit more. So tell us what your definition of conscious leadership is. Maybe it's personal. Maybe it's something that everyone feels the exact same way about. But how does this whole philosophy work? And how do you apply it to growing your personal brand and making yourself a person that people want to turn to, trust as a resource, and know that you are guiding them in the right direction? I love this question. Conscious leadership really starts with getting clear on not only who you are and what your purpose is, it's, it's being that self leader, as I mentioned earlier. And, and what does that look like? That looks like investigating your inner talk, for example, that inner culture. Each one of us internalizes the culture that we see out there in the external world, the, the culture that we're brought up in, the culture that we first experienced maybe early in our career. We internalize a lot of that and we're, we're speaking to ourselves in some pretty gnarly ways if we really stop and listen. And so one thing I like to ask is if someone spoke to you like you speak to you, would you work for them? Oh boy. And a lot of people <laughs> are like, no, I'm, I'm so unkind to myself and telling myself to get back to work. You have to do this. You have to go to work at the expense of your health, at the expense of 
your children and the the closeness that you have with them or whatever it might be. So, so to me, conscious leadership really starts with that self leadership piece and building an inner culture of dignity and inner culture of love even. And I really believe that leadership starts with us and ripples out into everything that we do. So by cultivating that self-awareness and that conscious leadership within, we get to then bring that raised awareness to how we're showing up with others. 